The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the county of Merced, California. 262,000 people call it home. We're known as the gateway to Yosemite. People come to play from all over the world and enjoy nature's beauty. We're the home of the 10th University of California, where America's future comes to learn. We are in the heart of America's breadbasket, the Central Valley, and grow food for the world. Pleasant people, tree-lined streets, and bike paths along the creek make it seem like an idyllic setting. But there's a seedier side. County government is out of control, dysfunctional and broken. County employees are committing felonies, sexual bribery, harboring gang members, and stolen equipment. Supervisors hire with no background checks or regard for liabilities to its citizens by letting them drive without licenses. They think the people are stupid. Political patronage, favoritism, and incompetence is the norm. That's where we come in. We carry a microphone and a powerful transmitter. We only want the truth, accountability, and justice for all. To follow morals and laws of the land. We are Citizen Watch. Hey, have you guys read the latest about the county problems continue this morning in the paper? How can you not? Ramona Javargas is is after every one of those people. Looks like she's got a little nest in there, huh? Yeah, well, we got an HSA employee, Marissa Ann Gonzalez. She makes $51,000 a year. Evidently, her boyfriend is a her husband, I can't tell which, is a gang member that had some uh, stolen property, body armor, uh, children in the house with this kind of thing going on. I mean, it's just unbelievable. The county is out of control. You know, I read not, a paper not, last weekend where they were going to try to get some ethics and things there. I, I, <laughs> I'm just surprised. Know, it, and hear good. how... Did you did you see the the comments that's from the supervisors? The, that's the thing, Casey. That uh, that annoys me is I I think that you know Mike North instead of just reporting, I think you should sit with the supervisors, and when the newspaper people come to them, he kind of guides them through it because they come across like not knowing what to do. You're making and, no, they come across like what's the big deal? Well, they're like, so out of touch. Yeah. Well, it's not they're, they're, they're you're, you're so, making a big they're, deal they're out of so, nothing in a, in a fantasy world. You know, you know, case. I don't think it's. I, I, I personally don't think it's that way. I think what it is. I'm going to be very honest. Is they're just guys. Okay, they're they're just. I'm just John Pedroso, and to me, I'm like Johnny. You might be a great guy to me, and you're a friend of mine. And Jerry O'Bannon, I know very well, and he's a very nice man to me. But when the microphone is on and people are asking you for your viewpoints, think before you open your mouth. John Pedroso says that a lady who has eight suspensions and two DUIs is a safe driver. How does that look? Deidre Kelsey and Jerry O'Bannon. I mean, Jerry O'Bannon's comments look more like Jerry Lewis's. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, he he says, says, I don't think this is a black eye for the county. When you have as many employees as we have, you have some problems, some people that make mistakes. I I just don't get it. And then Deidre Kelsey she goes, I don't think it really reflects on the county at all if she's been doing her job properly for 15 years. What I are like, you kidding me? What I like, How out of touch are you, Deidre? What I like with Deidre Kelsey is she gets even dumber. To a certain degree, what goes on in people's personal lives is not pertinent to their jobs. Really? That is, that is absolute crap. What happened to background checks? I mean, didn't you have to go through a background check, Robert? They don't just let you sell annuities and life insurance without knowing who you are. Sure they do. No, they don't. You're right. No, but but here's the point. You're not going to pick that stuff up in, okay, but here's my question. If you're making $51,000 a year, and you've been with the county for 20 years, okay, do you have any brains that, you know what, if I do anything that could be construed as kind of wacky, I could lose my job? Yeah, not only that, but what was her job? Her job was to determine eligibility for people for welfare programs. Now, if right. her judgment, assistance, health insurance, if her judgment, benefits, if this, stamps, right, if this is monitoring clients' cases, I mean, yeah. you don't think she's open to corruption? And this is indicative. If she's going to make these types of poor decisions in her life, that's how it juxtaposes to us as county taxpayers. Is if she's making these these decisions in her personal life, what kind of decisions is she making at the welfare program? When she's determining eligibility for individuals and what services they're going to receive. 
But here's the here's the thing about it that that I didn't understand. And you know, everybody always says I'm innocent. I'm innocent. I'm innocent. I didn't know. And that's what I love about California is we take all these knuckleheads and we give them the benefit of the doubt because they say these in, these very golden words. I didn't know. Well, isn't that what we heard from poor ass? I didn't know. And. You know, Johnny and everybody. Well, yeah, but Tony know. Thompson, I mean, he didn't say that. He's no said, excuse, folks. We expect you to know. But here's for what. Ten years a year, we expect you to know. I really feel bad for Jim Brown over there. He's trying to run a bunch of kindergartners. Yeah, but here's a situation that was hilarious. It says in here, Merced police initially said that Gonzalez was a suspected gang member, but she was not booked on any gang related charges. So we have a suspected gang member working for the county. Mm hmm. Deciding eligi- welfare benefits, uh, welfare benefit eligibility for our citizens. A gang member. Mm-hmm. And no, a suspected. Come on, suspected, suspected and gang member. Okay, um, and our supervisor's position is: is hey, no big deal. None of our business. If she's a gang member in her personal life, ah, she's How doing does her that job. Reflect on her job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she seems to be doing her job. Really believe that she didn't know. She's been with this guy for twenty years. She's uh-huh. thirty-six years old. That means she's been with him. She's since she's sixteen. Haven't we heard that this is endemic, that this is generational, generation after generation? Isn't that what Paisen used to say, Steve? Yes, they do. And it, maybe the Nortenos aren't only running Planata. Maybe they're running the county welfare system. Whoa. 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 I wonder which side of the fence Anna Pagan's on. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? <laughs> but I'm going to be honest. Wait a minute. Anna Pagan, did you not see? Oh, I got to tell you guys something really funny. It was funny since you brought her up. Okay, I went to that Steve Gomes program. Yeah. Okay, most of the information we already had on Citizen Watch, we already reported. But the part that they didn't see or we didn't know is there was a hip hop section in the end where Steve Gomes and Anna Pagan tried to uh, relate to the kids and they did this hip hop scene. And, and Anna Pagan and Steve Gomes are the new two pop hip hop artists in Merced. It's absolutely phenomenal. You guys got to watch it. It's funny. Well, maybe they're maybe they're trying to appeal to the clientele. I was just completely disappointed. There was a little bit of hope this weekend, like I say, when I saw the article that Jim Brown is trying to bring some changes over there, some things called ethics. I know it's a big word for you supervisors, and you don't know what it means. Look on Wikipedia. You know, the state senate is going through this right now with Adam Gray's old boss, uh, Calderon, and, and uh, Rod Wright, who have, you know, felonies. Can I the only something? thing that's come out of that is the Senate has lost their supermajority, so they can't ram legislation down our throat or up somewhere else that we don't like because they don't have a majority to do it now. So I want to thank the felonious activities of those senators felonious. to at least spare the citizens of California from their misguided policies. Got a question for you. What? Is it my, my imagination, or did I read somewhere that Ron Wright who has been indicted on perjury charges. Is it perjury? Right. Yeah, yeah, perjury. He lied about where he was okay, living. Okay, and Calderon. Okay, and Calderon. And old, and old uh, Steinberg says, well, you know, until it's finally adjudicated, you know, he can stay on. But and yet Calderon, he wants to resign. Now, what's funny about Calderon is the FBI wanted Calderon to wear a wire, and guess who they wanted him to implicate? Steinberg. Steinberg. Yeah. Well, Steinberg kicking on him and not Rod Wright which is absolute crap. They're all guilty as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, but here, here's my question. The guilt part is, look, if there's any sniff of impropriety, okay, in my profession, I'm fired immediately. Exactly. How is it I read that these guys are able to hang on and collect their $95,000 a year paycheck while That's they're right. doing time? That's right. They're going to collect their check for months and months, maybe years, while this stuff is ferreted out through the appeals process. Meanwhile, instead of just dismissing them outright and having a special election for their district, they don't want to give up power. It's all about power, folks. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. And what you see is corruption from top to bottom. Yeah, I don't but, care if it's Sacramento or the county of Merced. But I'm here's begging the FBI to come into this county and do a top to bottom audit of every department. Where does it end? When's the next shoe going to drop? You know, and then we have O'Banion. Well, I don't think it's a black eye. Jerry, you can't see. You're so myopic. You're so out of touch. You're so disillusioned that you have no idea what's going on in that county, and you're supposed to know. That's what we elect you to do. But you know what I want to know is why do these people are, okay, 
It started with butchery. I mean, it started way before that. Hey, let's talk about Soraki. Let's talk about a sheriff's investigator who doesn't know his wife has brought home a million bucks million from two. where she worked. You know, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I could be like, bonuses. hey, are Gaze. you kidding me? Gaze. This guy couldn't find his ass with both hands and a flashlight. He's he's, re- he's investigating crimes out there. That ought to make you sleep real good at night, folks. Hey, here's what's funny about Shiraki. I'm like, if I was his wife, I mean, if I was her husband, and I'm looking at Bank of America, and I saw that amount, I'd be going, "Holy crap! Where'd that come from? That must be a banking error." No, I'd be all over it. No, but these people play innocent and they play stupid. And the state of California, in our liberalness, lets these stupid people get away with it. Like That's this young, exactly right. like this young lady, Marissa Gonzalez. She's with this man for twenty years. She had three children. She doesn't know whether uh, Pedro's buddies are gangbangers or not. She doesn't see no. him toting the guns through the house. No, all she says is, uh, you know, I, I'm a, I work hard. I take care of my kids in my own home. I want people to know I'm a good person in a bad situation. Well, you know, I understand innocent until proven guilty, but this don't look good, Miss Gonzalez. And if you're really taking care of your home, that really leads me to question your ethics and morals. And well, the county needs to get something in place down there. They need to do background checks right off well, the bat. Here, here's something that would be, and, and me, I'm, I'm a naturally suspicious person when I see people come and they look a certain way and I look at them and I, and, and I, you know, your haunches come up, okay? You know, it's not like, you know, you, you walk through a bad neighborhood and hope you're not going to get your butt kicked. I mean, you, you act a certain way. What I don't understand is, is when people are at parties and are meeting Pedro, then they kind of question whether or not the guy was a gangbanger or not, okay? Uh-huh. When it's, you know, like at the yeah, county Christmas party or something? She knew what was going on in that home, and the sad thing is, folks, the kids knew what was going on, too. She has a 16-year-old there at the house mm-hmm. that, that, that supposedly uh, doesn't know. You know, she's worked for the county for 15 years, six, and a 9-year-old, and a 1-year-old boy. Now, the 1-year-old boy may not know yet, but I guarantee you the two girls, 16 and 9, know. And this is where Paisen talks about this generational thing, because they grew up in a household knowing that this is okay. You know, it's okay to steal. It's okay to have illegal guns. It's okay to gang bang. Well, you know, the situation to me, though, is, yeah, that's her situation. It happens every day. Sorry to say that. But what I just think is funny is, uh, and and I, I said this to Steve off the air while we were waiting to get you on, was the fact that, now, Anna, Anna, Anna Pagan, I will say, she acted professionally and said, hey, it's a, personal, it's a personnel issue and I can't disclose it. Okay, fine. But I think that the supervisors and in their infinite wisdom to try to make themselves look better than they are, are, are always shooting themselves in the foot because they don't think before they engage their their uh, their mouth and you know they say things that are just dumber than snot and you're like really that's how our leaders think i mean deidre kelsey if i come out to work in your home are you going to do a background check i mean i could have all kinds of 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 criminal activity and it's okay because it doesn't matter in my job are you okay with that why do we have sex offender registries? Why do we have Megan's Law? Because we want to know what people's characters are. We want to know what their morals are. And we have a complete lack. It's vapid down there. It's absent. And these leaders, supposedly, and I use the term really loosely when I say leaders because they're not demonstrating that, they don't show any leadership. They've had opportunity after opportunity to correct these situations, and all they can say is, "I don't think it's a problem." But see, there's their. But see, if you look at their their responses to me, that's the liberalness. Okay, well, you know what they do in their own home is their business. I mean, you know, who are we to judge? You know, who are we to judge? You know, they're doing their job, and and that. I'm telling you, my father told me this years ago, your love children of the 60s and hippie kids of the 60s are now teaching morality to our children and our young adults today. And that is don't question a person's look. Don't question a person's integrity. Don't question their character because they have a right to be any kind of person they want. Well, that's that's not good for our county folks. That may be good in, you know, private industry or something like that. And I even disagree with that. But. I think our county deserves a lot better, especially when you're dealing with public funds, public monies, people's lives. Who knows what this girl had going on? Just like Tony Thompson over there doing the sexual bribery with his shenanigans. Sexual (laughs) healing. It's time to take our first commercial (laughs) break, folks. Uh, You're listening to Merced's Most Wanted here on this uh, Thursday evening. Cage is on a ramp. Cage is mad. (laughs) We'll be right back. All right.
Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America from border to border, coast to coast, and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm Jack Webb, and we have Harry Morgan in there, and uh, Robert the Velvet <laughs> Sledgehammer Tomasetti, and it. Like say, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Like how, drama there. What? How come you get, wait a minute, how come you get to be Jack Webb? Old, old uh, trusty over here, he gets to be Harry Morgan, but I get to be Sledgy. Wait, well, wait. And then you guys wonder why everybody goes, oh, he's so Sledgy. Sledgehammer is a personality all to himself. You know you're most, the most popular personality on KYLS, Robert. You Walter Winchell. Oh, I gave it up. I was going to ask yeah. anybody of our listeners if they knew whose intro that was, and I already said it. Sorry. Well, I want to welcome everybody to the second, second segment of Citizen Watch on AM 1480 KYOS. You can catch us on YouTube if you miss a uh, show. Just type in Casey Steed in the YouTube search block or KYOS 1480 AM, and you'll come up with all our shows. Well over a 1,000 hits. Well over a 1,000 Really? Hits. Are we on our way to a million? We're on our way to 2 million. That's right. And I, <laughs> I think, you know, uh, the word viral comes into play, but... I'll tell you, we try to bring up topical information on this show, and we really do care about our county. I know that it seems like we, we bitch and complain a lot, but in reality, it is America's breadbasket, and we are an idyllic city. And uh, I think we all remember it as a time when things used to be a lot better, and we're just trying to get some semblance back to those times. And if we keep having incidents like this and people sticking their heads in the sand like an ostrich, like the supervisors do up there at 2222 Peyton Place, well, we're never going to get out of the morass we find ourselves in, folks. Hey, and that's I... what we're trying to change is the dynamic, the paradigm there in that town. Can I be honest with you? Yes. You know, I, I don't think that the supervisors up there have their heads in their sand. I, I honestly feel that sometimes they don't know what to do. And I think it's due to their... Let's be honest. The supervisors aren't businessmen. The supervisors aren't mid-level managers. The supervisors are a popularity contest. I was the most popular guy in Dos Palos and Los Banos, and my name is Jerry O'Bannon. And I'm in Snelling, and I'm Deidre Kelsey. And I help. Anyways, <laughs> I always think of her with shake and bake. I don't know why. But anyways, I just think that when you ask them to say anything or do anything, they don't know what to do. Okay? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to correlate this case because you and I talked about this off air. The supervisors do not make any statements or stance on any issues if it doesn't fall within their jurisdiction. For example, guys, what did you, what, you know, what, what, what's your ideas from water? Well, that's MID's responsibility. Guys, what's your idea and what's your viewpoint of Walmart Distribution Center? Not our area of jurisdiction. That's the city. Why don't right. you get off your buttocks, okay, and say something that's prudent, smart, and sounds intelligent? Because they don't want to step well, on anybody else's toes. Well, you're exactly right, Robert. And you know, yeah, but that's a, hold, hold on, Casey, real quick, real quick. Steve yeah. said they don't want to step on anybody else's toes. But Casey, isn't that isn't that just passing the buck so that you know you don't get you know you don't want to offend anybody because you're looking at what vote? Well, look at Frank Pietro. To look at you got to look at for the good of the constituency you see you sell I've, or you serve. I've I've always showed people this flow chart. It's the voters. And then it's the electives, the supervisors. And then it's all below that. It's like they're so ignorant of what goes on in each department. I suggested that every supervisor work one week, not a year, but just during their term, one week during their term in each of the county departments. Go down there to planning and see how Hendrickson and the boys are doing. We've heard stories, people approach county planning, and they're, they're looked at like they're from Mars. Should I tell this them one, that story? This one-stop center is a joke. People go in there with an idea, and they get no customer satisfaction. Should and I tell them that story? The city of Merced, and they get they get service. What's the problem? Should I tell them that story? Yeah, tell them the story you heard, Robert. All right, I have a friend of mine. Uh, she has some money, some some means, and she came to Merced. Uh, she's actually from Los Banos originally, and her parents live here in Merced, and she wanted to be close to mom and dad. And so she uh, she married a, a wealthy man, and uh, she has some means of her own, and she wants to do parties. She wants to do events. So uh, she calls her realtor. Her realtor says, okay, what are you looking for? So they come to a property, believe it or not, on Campus Parkway. So there were seven acres or eight acres on Campus Parkway. So she says she goes over to her a realtor and a realtor says, why don't you, before you even investigate into this or buy the property, why don't you look at what the county will let you do and won't let you do, and then we can work from there. Okay, great idea. So she goes over to the planning department, four windows. Which planning department? County. 
She goes to the right. county planning department, four windows, lady sitting there working, throws her pen down and goes, uh, can I help you? She said, she told her story. She says, I want to look at this piece of property. I want to, I'm thinking of buying it, but I need to talk to somebody in planning about what's the opportunity and what's the availability of putting what I want on there. And she says, uh, hold on. I don't do that. She goes in the back, comes out. Older guy comes. Yeah. Okay. So what property are you looking at? So she points it out on the map. They got a huge map and he goes, okay. All right. Well, you need to fill out this application. He goes, okay. She goes, oh, and that'll be $14,000. <laughs> $14,000 permit fee. Doesn't even know what she wants to do yet. She said, Are you wait kidding me? No, wait, wait. She said, you got to be kidding me. She okay, said, it gets better, Steve. She says, excuse me? And the guy goes, well, what do you want to do? She goes, well, I want to put on parties or events. I want to have a place, you know, one-stop shop, you know, big thing where I want to do this on the seven acres. And I'm looking to buy it. Well, you got to put an application and the application cost to put it in. It's $14,000. She goes, now, wait a minute. Let me get this right. I want, you want me to pay $14,000 before I even think of applying to buy this property? Well, that's the process. So, that's so, disgusting. That so is she, absolutely so disgusting. So she says, what I thought was funny is the lady never said, hi, welcome to Merced County Planning Department. My name is whatever. Nobody introduced and themselves. And we wonder, we wonder Wait. why this county is so poor. So she goes and over to. Didn't we hear all the, the, the things about one stop? Oh, come on in. We'll take yep. care of you. So, so she goes the to the city. Carpet. Well, here's an example, folks. Keep going, Robert. So she goes to the city and, and she goes to city planning and she's thinking, oh, my Lord, no wonder why Merced is in trouble. There's no impetus to do anything. She goes. I mean, there's money here. Where, where's the brain cells? Where's the marketing? Where, where, what? So she goes to the city, and the lady comes out, and uh, hi. She goes to the planet. She goes, hi, my name's Renee. Can I help you? So my friend tells her what she wants to do. Oh, my God, that's so exciting. Really? Would you do, like, do weddings there and this? Oh, that's cool. Okay, hold on. I'm not the person you need to talk to, she said, but I think you're going to need to talk to the fire, the fire marshal or something. So the fire guy comes out and because I don't know what his real job was. But anyways, and he says, yes, ma'am, I'm Joe, and uh, how can I help you? And she said, this is what I want to do. And he goes, okay, well, you know, here in the city, um, you know, we have many buildings downtown that you could just move right into, and all you need is you need a business permit and a fire inspection, and you, I think you'd be ready to go. That's it? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So here you have night and day from the county, who, again, is supposed to be taking the lead. I, I don't know if these people down there at 2222 Peyton Place know this, but the city of Merced is part of the county. Hub Walsh, Supervisor Walsh, you represent the city of Merced. Supervisor Pedrozo, you represent the city of Merced. Why don't you show a little interest instead of saying, well, the Walmart Distribution Center, that's not part of the city, or that's not part of the county. Just because it doesn't go along with your Democratic leanings, your boys up there in Sacramento don't like the largest re non-union retailer, because that's what it's about, folks, non-union labor. Why don't you show some interest? Why don't you? But, but no, party politics comes before the, the good of the citizens. And this is a perfect example of what Robert said. And this is just one thing we know about. How many times does that happen? You know, we just heard this, that the uh, Youth Council and Frank Quintero was down there, and he said, how many of you kids know that it's called Merded? Everybody raise their hand. He goes, you know, we really don't like to call it Merded because people come to our community looking to relocate, and they're in plain clothes, and they ask people what they think of the city, and people say, oh, it's corrupt, it's, it's dishonest, it's full of graft, it's full of political patronage. Don't call it Merded. And they never even come. That's what Frank Quintero said. We have people that wanted to relocate here that turn around, get back in their cars, and head north to Turlock or head south to Madeira or Fresno because they don't want to do business in that pathetic wide spot in the road. And we're better than that. And yeah. when are they going to realize that? I have a firsthand experience on that. I had a, a friend of mine who's done very well who uh, I saw back at our old high school a few months back, and he had some money to invest, and he wanted to throw about two and a half million dollars our way and i have to be very frank with you i told him it's not the right time i said until things change here you know i've lived here 10 years this is not a place where i would recommend that you invest and I that's, well, and that's what frank can twer can tear you know we we always get kind of uh, but, chastised but guys, time for maybe building wait, 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 up frank wait. a little bit but he has a thankless job right he you does know, he just, he's trying to sell in a building over there for to work two and a half million for a million one people say well geez frank but you know at least he got it sold 
Well, yeah. and here's the thing that I like about Frank Quintero. And, you know, guys here, you know, Steve teases me about Frank Quintero because I rail on Mark Hendrickson and I give Frank a free pass. And here's why. Let's tell. Let's talk a little more about this nut processor that's going into the Pepsi building. Okay, I'm Frank. Nut out of Bakersfield, going to Blanche Almonds. Right. So what happened was, is Frank was going to sell the property. He had two offers for this. For one offer was for a little bit more than the other. He Two took five. He, he had one. You tell the story, Case. Go ahead, because you got the numbers. No, 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 no. You're right. Go ahead. One was a million. No, no. Go ahead. Million five, and the other was what? Million one. Yeah, a million five, but the guy was only going to bring four or five jobs. The million one offer, 75 plus and expansion so, in the future. Now here's, now, here's long-term thinking by Frank Quintero. Frank Quintero at the city says, hey, wait a minute. We'll get less money today, but we'll get more money in the long run. Okay, if we get, oh, yeah, well, let, well let's make the deal. Now, I know what the supervisors would say. What are you, stupid? That was $400,000 you left on the table. Or they look at, well, is Sun Valley Nut non-union? You know, we can't have any of these <laughs> non-union boys around here. Well, they they'll be bringing they in. at the Walmart Distribution Center. Yeah. 1,500 <laughs> good-paying jobs just walked out the door, folks, last December. They're gone. And if you think they're going to come back, well, I've got some land in Arizona with oceanfront property for you. <laughs> hey, I, gotta, I, gotta, I want to go back to something, though, and this is an economic point of view, and this is my point of view. When the market is down, that's when you buy. And I disagree with you, Steve. I think if your friend wants to invest in Merced, this would be a perfect time because what will happen is, it, you know, the prices are lower and they're more accommodating. When things are booming, okay, then they can, then they can dictate Would he to have you. to drop fourteen grand to get a permit to think about what he wanted to do here? Well, that's the county. You talk to him. I know. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing that I would be so embarrassed if that happened. I mean, it's it just it's so ass backwards. I mean, if you're just contemplating how you want to use a piece of property and they're going to ask for fourteen thousand dollars. Am I is that uh, it just sounds bizarre to me. I asked her if she wanted to do it on the show. She said no. And I said, well, I'll do it because I think it's stupid. I think what it is, is I think I, I honestly think that people in the public sector do not look that they're public servants and they're public employees. She says every time she went to somebody, it was like, oh, you're bothering me. There was no, she tells me a story. And, about I, and I want to bring a good friend of mine and two and a half million dollars of his money into that. Well, you know, you got to look at it this way, though. You know, if you it, firstly, I'll tell you, as soon as I meet him, if I met him, I bring him Frank Quintero. I would go to Frank Quintero or Marie and say, here you go. Take care of them, well, and I think they would do it. I think Frank Quintero is doing a marvelous job, but he's in a thankless you, spot. You pointed me towards Elmer Lorenzi. Yeah. Elmer would okay. We'll talk about that later. That's not for this he's, he's kind a of situation. Guy, but let me tell you this. But Frank's for the city. Frank, and so does and so does Robert. These people, these elected, John Pedroso, Jerry O'Banion, Deidre Kelsey, Hub Walsh, Lynn Davis, the one we never see. You work for us. We don't work for you. Okay, you don't sit there on that bias at at twenty two twenty two Peyton Place and and dictate to the peons. We dictate to you, and you have forgotten that. You are so out of touch. For Jerry O'Banion to say, oh, I don't think it's a black eye. Jerry, you don't have a clue. He calls, you don't have a clue. He calls people that think it's a black eye conspiracy theorists. Right? Oh, my God. But what did I say about John? So but wait a minute. Touch. What did I say about John Pedroso? John Pedroso, when I investigated, and he's a friend of mine, and I said, if he did anything wrong, yep, his head needs to be put on the pike. And I talked to Norman Drotty, and Norman Drotty said, John, never asked for, for a favor. Never asked for a favor. I talked to somebody at the court who said, those kind of letters are asked every day. John didn't do anything wrong. Okay. But because there is an image problem and a perception problem with the county, this is exactly what you get. You get hey, people. Well, Gonzalez went back to work this week. They have and a Anna massive. Pagan doesn't even put her on a leave of absence. There's a massive I image problem in this whole county. I mean, it's just a massive. Well, image and here's problem. my problem with leave of absence. This case, okay, if you and I were in the private sector and we have a personal issue, like say for example, you got a DUI, okay, and you're thrown into the pokey, okay, and you're thrown into the pokey, you have to take vacation days, sick leave, you got to burn some personal days. How can these people get to sit at home on a paid vacation because they or work get for to the retire? They get to retire. Look for Buttry. You know, Tony Thompson, thirty thousand dollar independent report that said he was guilty as hell, but the sheriff didn't want to read it because if he read it, he would have had to do something. So again, hey, you know, we'll just put that in the corner. Nobody can read it. Let's just let the guy retire, and everybody will forget. Well, Isn't that what we heard about mm. Porus? 
oh, it'll just blow over. It's not a big deal. And that is everybody making a big deal about. I think that is kind of the MO is just uh, don't talk about it. It'll blow over. But, uh, you know, one thing we are about here at Citizen Watch is uh, possible solutions. So maybe on this third segment, uh, could we start to maybe ponder how we can fix the issues that yep. we have here in the county? Oh, absolutely. Sure can. All right. Take, take, take us to break, Case. Hey, stay tuned, folks, for the third and final segment of Citizen Watch on KYOS AM 1480. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, welcome to the third and final segment on this beautiful Citizen Watch Thursday edition, March 6th. We're into March already. You know, I don't know if folks realize, but... Uh, Lent began yesterday. 40 days of repentance uh, ends in April 20th. We're supposed to resist the devil's temptation. I don't know what you guys are giving up. I'm going to try to give up sugar. Uh, it's kind of hard for me because I really have a sweet tooth. Anything you're, you guys are giving up? Talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not answering your phone at 10 o'clock at night because you're bored. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure the uh, supervisors would like me to give up for 40 days, but Anyway, for all of those folks out there of the Catholic persuasion, uh, uh, I, I hope that you can stick with it. Forty days is a long time, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the sugar thing. You know, one thing we were talking about was how we can change things. And, and I know folks may think that we're three angry old men, and we really aren't. We like to have a lot of fun and joke around. And I was really surprised at some of the good feedback we got on last Thursday's show where we were kind of cutting up. And we'll try to do that more, but there's so many so many topics and, and issues that we want to get out there to our listening public on KYOS. And, you know, one of the things I, I think we can do is elections. Uh, you know, the, the kids there on the youth council, they wanted to see more uh, chain stores come in. Of course, they want to have an area that do unlimited graffiti, which, again, I don't really understand that. But we need to listen to the people and to the citizens. And short of changing the leadership, I, I don't know what else we can do. Yeah, well, Robert uh, had a suggestion. Robert, you want to share that, uh, the clean version of what you said before? <laughs> Blow it up and start all over. <laughs> yeah. No, you know, I, we need to we, bulldoze it. I don't no, know. You know, I, you know I, I honestly think that Merced is on the right track. That's the city. I think the city's on the right track. I think that the county, again, I think that there's a, an educational void. I think that, uh, you know, when we're doing and we're dealing with the public and we're dealing with politicians, you're dealing with popularity contests. You're not dealing with people who actually have an acumen on business. Uh, I don't know what Jerry O'Bannon's situation was or Deidre Kelsey's or Lynn Davis. I do know that Hub Walsh was a uh, public employee. Um, but, that from way back. But I don't understand why we aren't looking at people that really... You know, it's kind of the freedom of speech for me, but not for you situation. They don't want people that have, like me, I have cutting edge uh, ideas. You know, not only that, but I have criticism, okay? And you're not going to muzzle me. If I think that something's wrong, I'm going to say it. I'm going to speak about it. I'm not going to hide from it. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to shy from it. But the point of the matter is, in California, that's not what's wanted. That's not what's necessary, unless you're a celebrity, then they'll follow you off the end of a cliff. But my point is, is with Merced County, I think what we need, and I heard this is, I think we need a, an awakening. I think that the citizens need to get together and look at the supervisors and say, hey, you work for us. And you look like a dumbass when you open your mouth. So why don't you guys like filter it a little bit? When the lady's talking to you, can you take five or ten minutes to say hold on a minute? and kind of, Or do you have to just jump out there with the first thing that comes into your mind? Okay, John looked like a knucklehead. Okay, uh, Lynn, of course, does not because he doesn't say much. Uh, bless right. you. Um, you got Jerry O'Bannon, who I respect, who just looked like a buffoon. And you got Deidre Kelsey, who every time she opens her mouth, I just look at her and I think of her as Cruella, Cruella DeVille in the 1,101 Dalmatians. I don't know why, <laughs> but I just yeah, look at her as, oh. When that comes to me, you know, let them eat cake. She's Again, they're just out of touch. Like you say, maybe it is an educational thing. You know, maybe maybe we get, you know, you, you get what you pay for, so to speak, that way. But, yeah, but it's just very disheartening. Yeah, but and I do. think that, you know, one of the areas they failed on is water. You know, we they had the they had the realization, the epit the epiphany last week that hey, we're in a drought. Let's declare a drought. They're gonna send out some notes in the utility bill. You know, if it's yellow, let it mellow. If it's brown, flush it down. <laughs> and they're not talking about the governor. 
you know, and what they should do is come out with a well drilling moratorium until they can do a comprehensive water survey, not a study, but a survey, and determine what we have in the ground before they let every Tom, Dick, and Harry go out there and plant a new almond orchard and suck the aquifer dry. Because how many experts do we need to have in time after time after time and again that say if we ruin our aquifer, if we ruin our groundwater supply, we are the next dust bowl because it doesn't come back. It's not a sponge, folks. It's a pumice stone. And once it's crushed, it's crushed. But no, we're just going to send out some notes in the utility bill. Are you kidding me? Do you know that MID raised their rates yesterday from $25 an acre foot to over $100 an acre foot? Did they actually go through with that? Yes, it went through. That's a four-fold increase. And if you don't think your food is going to cost four times as much, wake up. Smell the coffee, folks. And what I think... These leaders are not leading. Now, you've got MID that's trying to do some things out there, and next week we're going to have John Swigert in from MID. He's up in Sacramento right now trying to fight the good fight, but it's like trying to roll a boulder up the side of Half Dome. These legislatures have, legislators have no idea. Their answer to the drought is give the farm workers more food stamps. Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely insane? Let's talk about high-speed rail. Judge Kenny just ruled that the uh, litigants down in Kings County have legal standing to go after the two-minute, two-hour and 40-minute ride from L.A. to San Francisco that's going to be impossible to maintain. And yet we have our supervisors with their bags packed sitting there on the platform looking down the tracks waiting for that train to come. It ain't coming, folks. It's dead. You should be working on dams and impoundment. And you should be up there with Swigert in Sacramento saying, let's raise Exchequer, not 18 feet, but 80 feet. And let's build three more while we're at it. Didn't we hear there's a sister plant to the San Luis Rey Reservoir, another couple of valleys that could be filled in? You know that in the last rainstorm, we let 25,000 cubic feet of water a second go out to the ocean because we didn't have a place to put it? This isn't, this isn't a vision. This is myopia. These people are stupid, and Robert hit it right on the head. Well, here's the thing that that bugs me, too, is I think that a lot of these politicians, I think a lot of these county employees, city employees, a lot of them, I don't think I don't say all everybody. Every time I say the word a lot, you know, many, they always lump it as all. I think the way it's going in the paper, Robert, I don't think there's many left. Well, here's what I'm talking about with groundwater. Okay, I ride my bike at night. I like to ride my bike at night. Less traffic. Uh, I don't feel threatened by dogs and things like that. Okay, I got a light on my car on my bike. I know what roads are not traveled. You could ride down there, enjoy yourself, listen to your music. Okay, the problem is when I come around the county building or the city building or the parks, I see water waste. I see water sprinklers sprinkling concrete. Okay, because the homeless people turn them to the. Okay, I watch uh, over there on Twenty First Street where the. Um, 21st and M on the corner where that uh, uh, parking lot is across from the county building. Okay, they got geysers spewing, okay, like 10, 20, 30 feet in the air. Okay, yeah, all over the place. Sprinkler heads to get scrap metal for their methamphetamine addition. Whatever, but the point of the matter is. We're wasting water at the city and the county level, and yet they do nothing about it. I went into the county, no lie. A couple of years ago, I was railing against this. They want to, I'm riding my bike, I'm watching all this waste, but they want to put water meter on my house. There's only a man of one. I hardly ever go home. I mean, I just go home to sleep. I'm at my friends and things like that. And they want to dictate whether or not and what water I could use, but yet the county doesn't look at anything. A lady at the county, I walked in and she said, I wondered where all that water came from. Every time I come home, every time I come to work, there's always water in the gutter. I go, that's because you built your building around a moat. Yeah. And she didn't get it. And I'm like, lady, didn't you think of calling somebody and going, hey, there's three feet of water in here. How come we don't call somebody? No, not my concern. No, I know. Well, hopefully, like I say, we hope to have John Swigert with MID, and we've had Dennis Velasky in the past. And that, like they say, the regulators, the environmentalists are driving the bus. You know, they're letting fish drive the bus instead of people. We have to realize that if people are going to have jobs, if we're going to get the agricultural sector back to work, food grows where water flows. And I hate to tell you, but every living thing is made of carbon. 
And what do our legislators want to do in Sacramento? They want to tax carbon. Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely insane? You're running business out of this state, let alone Merced County. You know, out of 58 counties, we're bringing up the rear every you know, time in every poll. You know what they do? The worst place to live. What? You know what they do? Okay. If anybody ever, did anybody go to the post office lately and see the cost of stamps? Yeah. yeah that's what, okay. We're going up. Cents, okay. It? 30 years ago, the stamp was only, I think, eight cents. Now it's up to a half a buck. That is a yeah, huge growth in thir- as a huge growth in thirty years. So you know what they do? They do exactly like this. The, okay, the cities, the counties, the state. Okay, the, the 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 stamp people, the post office stamp people. Okay, they do this. Comcast did this too. They come to Merced and they expect a certain amount of revenue. If they don't reach those revenue limits, they ask for an increase. So what they end up doing is they cannibalize their customers. So here's what Merced, here's what the state does. They drive businesses away to Texas, to Arizona. Tesla is looking at New Mexico and Arizona. They're not even staying in California. Okay. No. So they drive them away and then they look and say, we can't balance our budget. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to raise your taxes. We're going to raise this fee. Taxes. We're going to raise right. this. We're going to raise that. Okay. Same thing with water. How about if you people just use less? Okay. How about if you take a 10 minute shower instead of 20 minute shower? Let's, you guys have to bear the burden, not the government. The government's not going to go over here and come with an idea that's going to work. No, we're going to let the taxpayer, it's always falling on the backs of the people. Always. Right. And that's, that's exactly. We need forward thinking leadership. They had a meeting the other day out at UC Merced and on Aldo Sansoni. I don't know if I'm saying that name right, yes. Robert. My buddy Aldo. Said, Look, we need solutions that are long term, forward thinking. We're going to become a dust bowl unless you guys, the legislators, come up with solutions, not more food stamps, not take 10 minute showers. We need more empowerment. We need more recharge basins where, basins where we're putting water back into the ground when it rains in the good years. We need to look forward. Roberts talked about the cyclical climate of California. Do we forget? We do. This is just unbelievable to me. I, 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 say, it's I think it's all about. I think it's all about pandering for the vote. Okay, I think that the politicians and I had a excerpt from a book I read, and I'll bring it in on Tuesday in case I forgot it. I was running yeah. late this morning, but there's an excerpt excerpt in a book that uh, talks about what government should do, and it was phenomenal. It was written by Chris Matthews, and it's in the book called uh, "Tip and the Gipper," and it was when politics. Uh, worked or something like that and, and I'll bring it but it's really really poignant and it talks about how we don't work together for anything we pander for votes we don't do what's best for our constituents we pander for votes and look where that's gotten us there's no crap. compromise it's, it's a crap bill. I mean yeah. look what Obama did with uh, the, you know the house of representatives just voted about making the uh, fine zero dollars because Obamacare is so screwed up and here he says, if that comes to my desk, I'm going to veto it. He won't admit that, hey, this is a bad law. It's but not you know working what? out real well. Let's give the people one year of no fine. But and here's the, at the same time, he changes the rules to his own law. Well, here's the thing that makes me laugh. I was like scratching my head when he was at uh, Monticello. And he was taking the French, the French leader through Monticello, and the and and I remember it. They were all over him, and I'm thinking that's no where Thomas Jefferson lived. Yeah, and I'm thinking no big deal, no big deal, no big deal. But I heard it, and then I was like, okay, what's the big deal? And I listened to it, and now I realize what they were pissed off about, and what they were angry about was the lady goes, uh, Mr. President, um, protocol says you can't do that, and he goes, huh, I'm the president of the United States, I can do anything I want. Right. That, yeah, he's, he's abandoned the Constitution. And they all have. The liberals are saying we're at a constitutional crisis. We have three divisions of government, the legislative, the judicial, and the executive. And you would think only the executive is running the ship anymore. Exactly. And they do it. And I remember reading about and watching Nixon on Frost and Nixon, where they were all upset because he did an executive. Was it, Casey, an executive order? or an, What did they call that? Well, yeah, if, if Nixon, if a Republican was doing this, you'd hear a complete outcry. But you don't. Well, because what I mean, the right team. Well, it's, oh, no, no. Look the other way. Wink, wink. Well, Ron Calderon, Rod Wright. They're not guilty. They're just a little misguided. Yeah, and but with Nixon, he 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 investigated seven people and put seventeen people, the IRS, and seventeen people. But he did what they called was it an executive command or something? What, what's what's the actual word? Where I the, think it's executive 
executive order. Executive order or something, and I'll, I'll look into it for Tuesday. But what happened is, is Nixon was run out on a rail. Okay, Obama has done it to millions of people, and nobody says a word. Huh, no, it's okay. Because if you do, you're racist. <laughs> you're you're, uh, you're against the first black president. It's not about that, folks. And anything that we talk about on Citizen Watch, whether it's the school district or our own failed Except you, you don't like Italians. local government, it's about accountability. It's about results. It's about performance. That's what we look at. This isn't personal. We don't have anything personal against these personalities. We just want them to do something simple their job. Hey, and it's time for you to do something simple too, Case. It's Wait, time Case, to take real, us home. We're almost out of time. Go, okay, hurry up. Real quick. Minute. Hey, have you noticed who's in the newspaper lately with all their little donations and all their little fun stuff? Who? Karen Adams. And yeah, well, <laughs> we're going to talk about that. I've got those articles. Folks, we appreciate you listening to Citizen Watch on this Thursday evening, March 6th. We encourage you to tune in next week, next Tuesday at 9 o'clock, where you'll hear Steve Kolar, the best engineer in AM radio, Robert the Velvet Sledgehammer Tomasetti. My mom always said, to bed, to bed, said Sleepyhead. Not so fast, said Slow. Put on the pot, said Greedy Gut. Let's eat before we go. And Robert, what did you always say? I always say that, but today, Walter Winchell said, a real friend is one who walks in when the rest of the world walks out. Well, good night, folks. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. 